Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. It's the first night of Ramadan uh, and we're having fun. Uh, I, but I want to ask you guys, how was the first night of Ramadan or the first day of Ramadan? Was it painful? Was it normal? You know, for me, it was, it was pretty normal because, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm, a, uh, I'm a sinless individual where I love uh, to discipline myself, especially during the month of Ramadan. Uh, but enough about me, you know, month of Ramadan is, is an amazing month. But with hashtag LNT, you just take it up a notch in amazingness, uh, if that's an word. Uh, but hashtag LNT, we're live. What do you guys have for suhoor? For me, I had kebab uh, with the rest of uh, the LNT family, the, the crew. Everyone had kebab in the morning. Hummus um, batheena. But we'll see what we're having for suhoor tonight. Uh, but it's 2 a.m. Karbala time, 12 a.m. London time, 7 p.m. DC time, and it's time for hashtag LNT. We're live, baby, in the holy city of Karbala. Let's go kick it off with what's trending, and it will be back very short. Do stay tuned. Who loves chicken? If you do love chicken, then you're, uh, you're in for a treat. 24 karat gold chicken wings. 50 for $1,000. Now, if you're thinking when, when someone says gold, you think of jewelry, earrings, necklace, uh, ring, watch, bracelet, ankle bracelet, whatever. No, 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 no. We're not talking about jewelry. We're talking about food where they mix 24 karat gold with it. This is, yeah, I, don't, I, I can't even describe that. You're rich, but you're filthy rich when you're eating wings with 24 karat gold wrapped around it or dipped in 24 karat gold now according to them it's it's uh, digested um and uh edible gold so you, when you eat it and you know when, when the doctor uh, god forbid if you die the doctor's gonna be a gold digger because he's gonna be looking for that gold uh, but 50 wings uh for a thousand dollars and people think that kfc is expensive um anyways Enough with that. Uh, what else is trending? Subhanallah, an explosive uh, eruption at Hawaii. Uh, at Hawaii, you know, Hawaii, Hawaii's volcano um, sent ashes thirty thousand feet into the sky. Thirty thousand feet into the sky. That's crazy. That that's where airplanes fly. That's like ten thousand meters up in in in, in mid air. Um, but the geological survey says that the eruption took place at 2.15 or 14.15 uh, GMT time um, today. Now, they have made uh, an announcement that the, uh, a red aviation code has been given to pilots uh, and, and air um, for... for, for th th that is crazy. That's crazy. That's an aerial shot right there. And, and, uh, 30,000 feet, uh, so they're, they're telling pilots to not go into that area just in case uh, the ash clouds uh, might ruin the engines of the plane and God forbid get the plane to the ground. But anyways, enough with what's trending. This bowl needs to be filled. How it's going to be filled, you're going to know in just a few minutes. Take us away. Welcome back, dear viewers. Now, just a, 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 a nice announcement for you guys. If you think that LNT uh, is only Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday and, and Saturday, it's not. We're live 30 nights in Ramadan. Uh, but to make it even better for you guys, this bowl right here, which we got today, um, this bowl, this fish bowl, has names inside of it. Show me, show me this. Yeah, see the names. The people that participated in yesterday, there's about nine names in there. The people that participated in yesterday's episode, their names were placed in here. And anyone that participates, your names were placed in this bowl. Callers, the people that text, uh, the people that send uh, audio messages, uh, text messages, comment on Facebook, Instagram, all of those stuff. When you guys do do those, your names will be placed in here. And the winner, during the live show only, so that the preview and the replays, no. During the live show, your names will be placed in here. We got slips, 
Uh, we got a pen to write your names down. Um, so, so participants of tonight's show, you're going to get a chance of a free trip to Karbala. Free trip. Who doesn't want a free trip to Karbala to come and 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 it's it's and you know what's even better? It's a free WhatsApp call, so it's not going to charge you a lot. Um, all you need is data. But anyways, let's kick it off with tonight. Now, a lot of people that are watching us right now might have kids. And kids sometimes, uh, or should I say, uh, most of the times, uh, they get on our nerves. Especially me, I have a three-year-old, uh, Ali Hadi, um, nicknamed Alawi. You know, I love him. Alawi, this goes out to you. When you grow up, you're going to see that three-year-old. Um, I love you, Baba. But, um, and of course, all of us, we love our children. But sometimes, Alawi, uh, which is his nickname, uh, he gets on my nerves. Uh, just like how any other parent gets mad uh, when their children don't listen to them or uh, when they say stuff and their children don't really uh, try to negotiate anything. You know, for example, if he picks up a hot plate and I say, don't do that, the reply is going to say, yes, daddy, I'm not going to pick that up. I'm, I'm actually kidding. Oh, no, he doesn't say that. Um, he, w he would go pick up the plate and when it drops and it breaks and spills everything in it on his other hand and he gets burnt, I get mad. You know, the little man doesn't listen. Baba, this goes out to you. Listen to your daddy. You know? What, what, what ends up happening is me getting angry at what he did because I hate when I see a child getting hurt. Um, so I go back to myself. I say, you know what? This is a little child. Um, and that's what actually calms me down. You can't really um, be that angry at a child. Uh, but now, slapping Ali could make him really learn the lesson um, that next time if he does touch that hot plate, or sometimes he loves, he loves doing this. is a real story. He loves doing this. When we're sitting on bed and he, and, and he wants water, he would drink some of the water from the cup, from his special cup, won't drink from any other cup, just his special cup. Drinks and then pours the rest of the water on the bed. Why? You know, I, I get angry because the, the, the bed's all wet now. He has to sleep next to us. Uh, but, you know, you don't need to do that. But, you know, I, I get angry. But if I do slap him, it's going to leave a scar. It's going to leave a mark, a damaging to his personality. Um, sometimes, which also results into depression. But... And when I do hit him, it m may result in him hating me or not loving me anymore. Forgiving him at the same time might also lead to a um, being in a position where he keeps on repeating that same mistake. So what do I do? I want to hear it from you guys. What do I do and what do other parents do in regards to punishing their children? And that's the question for you guys tonight. Three, two, one. Oh, mashallah, on point. Should you punish your children? Tonight's question. Should you punish your children? How you can participate is very simple. You can dial the number shown right now. Plus 964-774-067-1836. And, and you can let us know what you think about tonight's question. You can send us an audio note, an audio message, a written message, comment on Facebook. We are live on Facebook as well, so you can go and comment there. Uh, we are receiving Facebook comments, so inshallah we'll read them out loud. Um, so don't forget, whoever participates, your names will be in here. And I need this full bite tonight. No, I'm kidding. Uh, we'll, uh, but let's take a very short break, and we're back very short. So just stay tuned. Once again, we do welcome everybody tonight live from the holy city of Karbala. And tonight we're trying to find out what you guys think. Should you punish your children or not? I gave an example of my son earlier, um, a three-year-old who gets on my nerves. Do your children also get on your nerves? I believe 100% so they do. Um, so let us know how you discipline your children or should you punish your children? Um, that's your question for tonight. Now let's get into a little bit of uh, a points of um, should or should you not punish your children? Now, according to debate.org, 38% of people say, yes, you should punish your children. And 63% say, no, you shouldn't punish your children. Now, those 
who said, yes, you should, the 38%, they said that it, it will teach them a lesson. So that means that that father right there who's pinching the ear of his son, I don't know if it's staged or not, uh, but pinching the ear of his son um, will make him learn the lesson. Well, next time if he does do that same thing again, um, he, he, he's going to know that that ear pinching or a slap or that spank um, will, will, will come to him. At the same time, kids are creative. You know, the, if, if, if they're not going to do that thing, they're, they're, they're going to think of something else, uh, you know, to, to piss you off with. Uh, but uh, kids are beautiful. They're, they're, they're very, very, very beautiful. But those who claim no, that punishment isn't the solution to your kids, um, they say that it leads to depression. And the parents should learn other methods to teach their kids a lesson. Now, every parent uh, wants their children to behave and have good manners in front of everyone. Whether you have a three-year-old in my case, whether you have an eight-year-old, a five-year-old, any children if he's not a teenager, you want them to behave properly in front of your guests, uh, especially in front of your guests because they're in your house. Um, behave well in the mall, behave well in, 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 in shopping centers. You don't want them, you know, going m wild, uh, you know, uh, on like a, uh, in, in the mosque, especially in the mosque. Wow, when the Maulana is sitting there giving a lecture, all you hear is kids screaming in the next door room uh, or, uh, you know, somewhere else screaming and playing. Um, so should you punish your children? That's your question for tonight. Now, we resort to punishment or return to punishment. Um, the consequences, as we believe, this will set things right. Um, and But unfortunately, children rarely know or rarely don't know what what's going on they're not understanding the situation that they're in let's not forget you know we were children once and even if we were to go back and look at the situations where we did wrong we're going to think to ourselves what were we doing because in that state we don't know the difference between what's right and what's wrong and even if we go back to history we'll find when moses went to the castle of Pharaoh, Pharaoh wanted to see, wanted to see if that was a, a, a prophet or not. He brought coil, lit coil, fire, and Prophet Moses still went to that fire. So he knew that the instincts of a human being, as a child, they don't know anything about fear. They don't know anything about um, you know, being disciplined, being in a situation where they're not understanding their own personality yet. So that phase right there is very sensitive for the child. So how do you discipline your children? Well, according to news18.com, uh, we have a few six points to mention there. But before we do that, we have a call from Nisreen from Canada. Go ahead, Sister Nisreen. Welcome to Hashtag LNT, episode two of the special Ramadan series. Uh, and uh, we are live. Tonight's question, should you punish your children? Go ahead, sister. Yes, hello. Yes, yes salamun yes, alaikum. Yes, Welcome to hashtag al -Anti. And your question for tonight, should you punish your children? Uh, no, not by hitting them. Okay, how then? Yes, so what punishment it will be by taking from them what they like. Mm -hmm. And uh, give them the right proper way. Mm -hmm. Right thing. Okay. Sorry? Okay, so you mean grounding them, taking like away their PS3s and, and their cell phones and, and so on and so forth? I don't know if you're... You know, yes, yeah. Okay, okay. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Sister Nasreen, for joining us tonight uh, from you, uh, Canada. And your name, I actually wrote your name right here. Um, if we can get a close-up on that, your name is written right here. Um, and it will be placed inside uh, the draw. So right here, see that? See that? I don't know if you can see that, but your name is on this. Um, and it will be placed in this bowl. Uh, so first name for tonight goes into the bowl. Now, we were talking about uh, news18.com and how they're mentioning six, six uh, things uh, that instill good behavior in your children without you actually punishing them. Now let's go through them. Number one, 
you need to understand your child. You need to understand that in that phase that they're in, their personality isn't um, at its best yet. They'll do everything for you to grab your attention. You know, they'll, they'll, they'll throw water. You know, I have to go through that. My, my son loves water. I don't know why, but he loves playing with water. He throws water everywhere. Everywhere he sees, he has to throw water. So just to grab the people's attention, they, they hit. Um, they sometimes even, they imitate. And this is very important. When kids are small, they imitate the, the, the things. Even if you do it once, they'll imitate it. Uh, because that, they, they, they have a free memory which they need to fill up with experiences and, and with behaviors. So they imitate. That's very dangerous as well um, for you to take into consideration that your kids um, and understanding them as well. Now, number two, never raise your voice at them because they don't know what's going on. They're not understanding you screaming at them. They're not understanding your words. They, don't, they just see you screaming, voices coming out of your mouth. Nothing else. They're not understanding you in the best way. Um, so try uh, not to uh, not to scream at them uh, as much. And you know the era of fathers. Uh, uh, all due respect to my dad and and, and everyone uh, who has an Arab dad, uh, they can't seem to understand that uh, when uh, when when we do something wrong, right away they'll uh, they'll scream. But anyways, number three, um, spend time communicating with your children that's very important because one of the main points within a relationship between the father and the son or the father and the daughter or the mother and the son or the mother and the daughter um, the communication between them the connection of you between you and your child is very important because his personality grows you become a friend, a best friend, listen to them. If they're going through a tough situation, listen to them because you really, you should be the one cultivating the heart, the personality of your child because if they, if they don't find that, they're gonna go, uh, they're gonna go somewhere else uh, for their heart or for their personality to be, to be cultivated. And that sometimes, even sometimes, majority of the times, it's, um, it's, it's, it's very uh, dangerous for the child. But we just have received an audio message from Sister Zina from India. What did Assalamu alaikum. My opinion Assalamu regarding alaikum. should you punish your child is I believe that parents desirous of good upbringing of their children never abstain from beating them when required. But most intellectuals consider this tyrannical method of upbringing as barbaric and harmful for children. And I feel the same. A child cannot be reformed through physical punishments. Perhaps it might have a temporary effect on the child, but will very be harmful in a longer run. Like for example, when a child is beaten, he gets habituated of bowing down his head to torture and force. He may perhaps start thinking that force is the only key to success. He starts thinking that when one is angry, he should beat. By giving physical punishment to the children, the parents set an example for them to adopt the tyrannical laws of the jungle in their future lives. The children who get beatings develop hate sometimes antagonism against their parents. The children never forget the harsh treatment they received at the hands of the parents. And most of the Indian parents do physical punishments on their children. Repeated beatings can make a child timid and especially a coward. We have a wise hadith from Imam Ali al Salam that Luqman the wise told his son, my son, if you learn good etiquette when you are young, you will benefit from it when you are older. Whoever values good etiquette will give importance to it, and whoever gives it importance will take the trouble to learn it. So be in control of yourself while disciplining. One must ponder on this saying and sometimes not go overboard in their attempts to discipline. So I believe is there are many other ways. For example, you can sit down and talk to your child. You can understand his problem and not take such, um, you know, high measures for physical punishment, etc. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Sister Zinat uh, from India for joining us. And this is your name written down on this paper. Um, and inshallah, it will be placed. Uh, let's get this right here. Uh, name right there. All right right there that's it inshallah your name will be placed in the draw 
second name for tonight going into the bowl. Now we are receiving a few uh, Facebook messages, I'll read, uh, but uh, before that let's check out the public opinion and see what they've said in regards to this and we'll be back to read out the Facebook comments, let's do that. Assalamu alaikum everyone. I am Dr. Zakaria Abbas from India. Today's topic for Ramadan, is it right to punish a child or not? Well, I am against it. Because as a doctor, I can tell you that in the early adolescence period and early teenage life, if you inflict cruelty on the child, the child may get into psychological disorders. There can be a psychological impact on the child. But of course, in the early teenage life, it is a parent's responsibility to develop a positive and a friendly relationship with the child. You need to know and understand that you can be a good friend and once you do that the child himself is going to share everything with you you need to, you need to develop that rapport after teenage life when a lot of youth gets into you know bad uh, habits like smoking weed smoke smoking cigarettes or alcohol then it is your responsibility to stop that you need to find out where the the child is using the money from if it's your money it is your responsibility to cut the pocket money okay Assalamu alaikum, this is uh, Tanvir from Bangalore, India. Um, well, uh, this topic is a pretty large topic to talk about. A quick two-pointer about it is one, uh, being, a sh uh, being uh, Shia, follow Ahlul Bayt's teaching in terms of the various uh, stages of uh, learning the way you are believe. Seven, up to the age of seven, let the child be free. Seven to nine, you got to restrict your kid. Nine onwards, you got to be a friend. Now, this is point one. Point two is punishing and disciplining are two different things. They are two different words. Punishment is needed. It's like a game. In a game, if you do not have restrictions, a game cannot be a game. And that applies everywhere. That's about it. Thank you. Uh, for those who join us tonight from the public opinion telling us uh, what they uh, think uh, in, in their opinion should you punish your children now uh, just to go through very quickly uh, to, so we can go check out the expert and what they have said and we'll, t we'll uh, read out some of the Facebook comments that are coming in but uh, number four on the list of um, how to instill good behavior within your children uh, while not punishing them physically um, now uh, number four is help them solve their problems. A lot of the times you need your child to, for them to um, hold on to their personality or for them to grow their personality. Um, and that can be achieved uh, by you giving them the ability to solve problems on their own, which is very important. Help them, but make sure for them to, to uh, for them to hold, uh, to, to for them to resolve their own problems. Number five, teach, teach them how to handle their emotions, and that's important as well. Um, you know, not not for little kids, but for older ones as well. Um, uh, teach them. This is very important. Teach them how to handle their emotions and how to express them, their emotions to you. Become a very close friends to them. That connection between you and your child. Number six, teach them patience. Um, and teaching the patience has to be from you. You have to be patient uh, for your child to be patient. You have to be um, really uh, calm for your child to be calm as well. And that goes out to me first before it goes out to everyone. Uh, but um, let's read out uh, one comment uh, on Facebook and then we'll go to ask the uh, expert. Uh, Hassan Ali, he says children should be punished, not physically, but in a way that makes them understand their mistake, hoping to win the trip to paradise. <laughs> Insha'Allah. Insha'Allah. Uh, your, your name and all the others that commented, uh, that commented not saying Salam Ya Hussein. No, 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 no. That commented saying, answering, giving their opinion on tonight's question. So saying Salam Ya Hussein, uh, we're not going to put you in a draw. But let's ask the expert very quickly and be back very short. Let me just dot down the number. <laughs> Ramadan Mubarak. Should parents punish their children? This is one of those age-old questions. Children 
Indeed, like adults, definitely do benefit from an environment where there are clear boundaries and there is a structure. There are certain rules or guidelines that should not be violated either by themselves or someone else, and they expect that someone who violates those boundaries will somehow be punished or will not be rewarded because this is just and fair. This is uh, part of the innate human nature. nature. We do need some sort of boundaries and it is a form of abuse not to discipline children at all and just let them run wild uh, because this is something they need. But of course, when we talk about punishing someone per se, sometimes that has a bit of a negative connotation. Uh, we might not always be talking about doing things that are in someone's best interest or to help them grow, but rather we might be talking about control or lashing out emotionally or offloading our own emotions uh, or doing things to children or people because we don't know how to handle the situation. And that's, it's human, but it's not necessarily a good thing. And it, on a long-term basis, it's not going to really help the child develop the sort of behavior we'd like uh, or to really result in a good long-term relationship. So some form of discipline and boundaries is good, uh, but of course how to do that uh, is something that's going to vary a lot from case to case. Uh, one of the truisms of life is that we find it much easier to tell people what they're doing wrong than to tell people what they're doing right. This again is the same for children and adults. Whereas the reality is we respond much better to people who are telling us what we are doing right. Um, it doesn't matter if I'm a four-year-old child or a 40-year-old child. Uh, my inner child likes to be told that I'm good and I'm successful and I'm doing a good job and it makes me want to do more. Now, of course, when talking to a four-year-old, that's going to be praising different behaviors, but nonetheless, that's an extremely effective way to instill desired behaviors in children uh, or even in animals, incidentally. Uh, however, it does usually take more thought. It is a bit more of a challenge to identify what is going well. It's usually difficult to see what is going wrong. Uh, but that can sometimes help as well, rather than necessarily always having a dynamic of trying to keep someone in control. Also, it is important that expectations are communicated clearly to children. There are certain things we may more or less understand as adults, such as behaving properly, that might not be meaningful, say, to a five-year-old or a six-year-old, but if you outline to them specifically what they ought to be doing, then it's much easier for them to do it. And indeed, children are rather remarkable in that they do like to please the adults in their lives, uh, so they may try extra hard uh, if it's outlined very nicely. Uh, so that's a good thing to keep in mind as well. Now, with respect to disciplining children in Hadith, there are, of course, different things that are mentioned. But one of the things that has always stayed in my mind is related from Imam Musa al-Kadhim when he advises someone who asks him about this that um, instead of hitting his child he should just separate himself from him for a bit so make the child feel like the father in this case the father is unhappy with him and this is going to be enough to to punish him if you will because it's something that's really going to hit him and then the Imam tells him, but don't do it for too long, just do it enough to send a message. Because obviously the child is very sensitive, a short time to us might be a long time to them. But this is good advice to keep in mind as well from our Imam, peace be upon him. Have a great month of Ramadan and hope to see you soon. <laughs>